I made $4 million on Shopify dropshipping this month. Click the link down below. All right, yeah, guys, um, no, I don't actually even do Shopify. I, not that I have anything against it. So I think in this video, I'm gonna break down some of my income sources from last month, show you kind of what's going on. I, I don't know how many more of these we're gonna do in the future, but uh, I, I had a lot of people asking questions about it, so I thought we'd just go through it, and I'll show you guys kind of breaking down some of the income sources. There's really kind of five primary ones from the last month. I know just a lot of people are curious about it. Uh, and it's definitely weird to talk about personal finances or like my personal finances. I know this channel is primarily discussing personal finance. That's the topics of it. Uh, but talking about like my specific finances does get a little bit weird. So I think this is gonna be the last of the sort of income update videos. But it was last year when I made a video that discussed some of my income sources of how I was making like $7,200 a month. It was exactly a year ago. Since then it's grown about six fold in the past 12 months. Uh, is that going to continue in the future? I don't know. I'm not really planning on making a whole lot more money than what's going on right now. Uh, I'm just kind of doing this for fun. But, uh, you know, let's just kind of get into this video. And I, I hate that I have to say this every time, but I'm not selling you anything. There's no like online courses. So you don't have to worry about like just getting like 100 emails per day from Nate O'Brien just trying to get you to like buy my course. There's, there's none of that. Okay. So uh, if you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to the channel, drop a like if you find any value in it. And let's get started here. All right. So let's talk about the first income source that is not actually very regular. I don't see this very often, uh, but it is one that comes up from time to time. Uh, and that is when I actually sell stocks or securities. So uh, as you guys probably know, if you've been subscribed to this channel for some time, uh, I do quite a bit of investing. And there's times where I'll buy a bunch of stocks, sell a bunch of stocks, maybe mutual funds, ETFs, right? Uh, and so in the past month, in January, I did sell quite a bit of my Facebook shares. Uh, and I did this for reasons that we're not gonna get into too much in depth in this video because you didn't come to learn about why I'm not as bullish on Facebook as, as I once was. Uh, but, uh, so that was about 2,900, I think it was 2,959 uh, total profit from that. And I don't really recognize my gains until I actually sell stocks or securities. And I don't do that because I don't pay taxes on it until I actually sell those stocks. So uh, yeah, uh, that, that was a total profit from that. Now keep in mind that this is from many years of having money in Facebook stock. This is a couple years of Facebook stock uh, growth. So I did buy in about $150 a share, sold it for a little bit over 200. So my total profit was like 55 or $60 per share, but that was over multiple years of investing. And look, I'm not the best investor. Like there's, there's plenty of times where I lose money on different companies, different stocks, but the markets have been going up in the past couple of years. So there's sort of this saying that you could be a monkey and throw darts at a dartboard and you could have made money in the past like 10 years uh, from the stock market. So uh, I, I don't think that in any way I'm any better of an investor. It just happened that it, it was a good choice to buy Facebook stock at the time. And I'm glad that I did sell it and make a little bit of profit from that. Uh, so that's one of the first income sources that I wanted to share with you. If you're interested in, in investing, uh, I do have a number of videos on this channel related to it. Uh, of course, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just a random dude on the internet talking to a camera here. So please make your own financial decisions. I'm, I'm not a financial advisor, guys, okay? Uh, and so that is the first income source that I wanted to share with you. So my second income source uh, is something that a number of people People are very much interested in. I get asked this question all the time. And because I have shown it in the past, I'll just show you guys now again. Uh, and that is YouTube ad revenue from this specific channel. So this is kind of a weird one because for the longest time, I always just made this assumption that uh, people on YouTube don't make very much money. You might say one or two dollars per thousand views. And I've even Googled it and you can look up articles about how YouTubers are broke. They work at 7-Eleven, even though they have a million subscribers. Uh, and I can just tell you that in a lot of cases, that's, that's not true. Um, I know a, a number of YouTubers who have half a million or a million subscribers, and they're doing extremely, extremely well with their finances, or at least bringing money in. Some of them buy like Lamborghinis and stuff and just blow all their money. Uh, but the point here is that uh, I think people on YouTube kind of make more money than what people might sort of expect. Obviously, it depends on the niche that you're in. So from YouTube ad revenue, I'll pull this up, but it was $30,431.82 in January. All right, so I'll just, I'll just quick, quickly show you here. This is the YouTube app. Uh, February hasn't actually been as much. So you can see like February, I can't read this, I'm looking at it backwards. It was like $23,000 or in the past 28 days. Wait, I just got a hold so you can see it. Uh, and then if we look at like January, this is the one that was 30,000. And then if you look at the month before that in December, 
it was 24,000. So yeah, so, so it definitely fluctuates. Uh, it's been going down a little bit just because February hasn't been as good of a month as January was, partially because I was on vacation, partially just because I haven't put out as many videos. Uh, and it, it, you kind of see that effect going forward. So in January, I only put out, I think, four or five videos. So that's why so far my February revenue has been down because it, it's kind of reliant on the videos that I put out the month before. Now, January was a longer month. It was 31 days, so it might be lower in February. Uh, but okay, a couple things going on here. First of all, this is a really good month for my channel. This isn't always what happens. Sometimes it's, it's less than this by 50% or more. Uh, but look, from this, it, it, it looks strange because you see $30,000 from 2.9 million views. That just sounds off. It just sounds weird. But let me explain this because I think a lot of people just sort of don't think about the fact that there are so many companies now dumping billions of dollars into YouTube ads. So for example, on my videos, I make money every time that you watch an ad before a video starts, during a video, maybe I'll just place one right here or something, uh, and then after a video, ads might play. Every time an ad plays, I get 55% of that revenue, YouTube takes 45%. Last year, YouTube made $19 billion from YouTube ads, okay? I didn't make 19 billion, I made a hell of a lot less than that, trust me. I wouldn't be making these videos if I did make 19 billion. <laughs> uh, so, look, here, here's the point. Companies 10 years ago, when people thought about, you know, maybe you make a dollar, two dollars per thousand views on YouTube, companies weren't putting that much money into ads online. They were still using billboards, radio ads, uh, magazines, uh, TV commercials on, on cable television. And I think just in the past 10 years, there's been such a shift in where companies are dumping the bulk of their money. So they used to dump it onto these physical things uh, where I can't remember the last time I was in a car, I, I was sitting in the passenger seat, I can't remember the last time I was looking at billboards, reading billboards. Who does that anymore? People look at their phones, they're on their phone all the time, they're not looking at billboards or at, at, at TV commercials or at magazines. Who, who uses that? I don't know. I certainly don't. Uh, and so because of that, companies are dumping so much more money onto platforms like YouTube, like Facebook, like Instagram, uh, rather than dumping it onto those traditional media outlets. So that's why this ad revenue is way higher than what I would expect it to be, especially if I was thinking about this a couple years ago. And if you actually track the ad rates over the past couple of years of my YouTube channel, which I've been on YouTube for about three years now, they've been going up every single year. They've been going up and up and up and up. So when I first started three years ago, I was only making maybe three or four dollars per thousand views, and it's gone up significantly since then. Now, it also relies upon the niche that you're in. So for example, the niche that I'm in, I talk about money. I talk about finance, and guess what? There's a hell of a lot of money in finance. Think about banks and how much they are willing to pay to acquire new customers. This is why banks will offer you a $200 uh, account opening bonus. You'll see those, uh, those things all over the place where maybe a brokerage firm offers you $100 to sign up for their brokerage firm. That's how much money they're willing to pay somebody to get a new customer, right? And so I'm getting a piece of that cut because they're running so many ads on my channel and they're competing against each other. So I'm just gonna take some random brands here and say that Ally Bank might be running ads uh, and maybe say Chase, JP Morgan, American Express, they're all trying to run ads on my videos, right? And so if they're doing that, they're bidding against each other. That's the way that ads work on YouTube. They bid against each other to get that ad spot. And so they bid each other up to a certain price point. That's why, that's the, the, the analytical response to why the ad rates are definitely higher than what some other people might get on YouTube. So some of these days were about, let's see, the highest one here was about 1300 1373 uh, in mid-January, and then it kind of tapered off towards the end. I think this is when I was in Mexico. It was just a tad bit under $600 in ad revenue from this channel. Now, there's a number of other YouTubers who kind of show their ad revenue as well. So if you, for some reason, don't believe me, you obviously don't have to. <laughs> Nobody's forcing you to. Uh, but I, I think Graham Stephan, Ryan Scribner, there's a number of people, there's, there's dozens of people who have, have kind of showed their ad revenue and kind of how those ad rates fluctuate. And really does depend on the videos. I've had videos that have literally made me over $20,000 from a million views. And then I have other ones that have gotten over a million views that only made me three or $4,000. It really just depends on the content that you're putting out, the title of it. For example, any video that I put out related to minimalism doesn't get that much money. I don't make much money from minimalist videos. Uh, and that's because who would wanna run ads against a minimalist video where in the video I literally tell people to stop buying stuff, right? 
Nobody wants to run ads on that. And so that's why from my minimalist apartment video, uh, going off the top of my head, I think I probably only made maybe four, maybe $5,000 from one and a half million views uh, versus other ones where I talk about money more uh, that are going to make a lot more money from those ads. Now, a couple things that I wanna bring up here. First of all, look, uh, I'm, I'm not in any way talented or special or smart. Uh, and so the point here that I wanna make is that if I can do this, anybody can do this. And I literally mean that because a couple years ago when I started this channel, and you can go back, I, I don't want you to go back and look at my old videos because most of them I actually deleted. But if you go back and look at my early videos, they were absolutely horrendous. They were terrible. I couldn't put two sentences together. Uh, and so over time, I just kind of get better at speaking and learning how to talk and communicate with people. I'm a big time introvert. I'm not a natural speaker. Uh, I think if I took an IQ test, I would hopefully maybe score 100, which would be average. But then again, I guess stupid people don't know that they're stupid. So I don't know where I'd score, but I hope that I would be at least average. But my point here is that I, I, I literally, like there, there's nothing about me that's, that's smarter than anybody else. So the point here is that if I can do it, anybody can do it. And also I noticed one thing that I was kind of nervous about starting a channel in the beginning because I thought, you know, people aren't gonna take me seriously. I was 18 when I started my channel. I'm 21 now. And I thought, who the hell is gonna take an 18 year old seriously when he talks about personal finance, when he talks about saving money or, 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 or how to invest. Uh, and I was kind of nervous about that, but I said, you know what, let's just put out videos anyway. Uh, and I realized that most comments are generally pretty good. I would say for every 100 good comments, I'll get one bad comment where someone will just say something really, really mean, but usually kind of funny, actually. It cracks me up a lot of times. Uh, but look, uh, so if, if you're concerned about anything, like you have reservations about like uh, putting yourself out there on the internet, I, I would argue to just go for it. I think it's fun. Uh, it's, it's definitely kind of fun like when you bump into somebody who watches your videos and they like what you do, or you get messages from people who just say like how much your content has helped them. It's definitely a great feeling and I don't regret any of that. Um, so I think that's enough from the YouTube side of it, from the ad revenue side of it. Uh, but let's talk about some other revenue sources here. And the next source of revenue is from affiliates and sponsors. Now, look, I, I can't take you into the exact details of this. Hopefully you can understand. I've, I've signed contracts with companies, so I can't go into detail on like the exact earnings from this, but I can tell you that it was over $8,000 uh, from affiliates and from sponsors. Uh, this is something I've been dropping a lot lately. Uh, I haven't been doing a lot of affiliates or a lot of sponsors. Uh, and I just do that because I don't really like to recommend a lot of products. So for example, brands and companies, uh, they will offer to pay me money for mentioning them in a video. Or sometimes you'll see that I will leave a link to certain products or uh, uh, things down below in the description. So if you click on, on the, the read more or you click on the description button there down below on this video, you'll see maybe I'll put a couple links. One, follow me on Instagram and another maybe for like uh, get a 1.75% interest with this bank account. When you click on that link and then you sign up for that bank account, account, I might get a kickback of say $100 or $150 for every time somebody signs up for an account like that. So you can just kind of do the math there that if, if you get $100 per sign up and you're getting hundreds or thousands of people to sign up for it through that link, it can definitely add up. So it's sort of the separate affiliate marketing uh, uh, revenue source and sponsor source that comes from these videos. And it's definitely something that's nice to have to sort of diversify a little bit so that I'm not reliant on ad revenue specifically because there's something called the ad apocalypse, which has happened in the past and it might happen in the future where brands don't put as much money onto YouTube ads for whatever reason, there's a number of them. Uh, so kind of this affiliate revenue or the sponsor routes are nice to go as well to kind of diversify. But with all that said, it is still kind of all reliant on my YouTube channel at the moment. So uh, it's not the best. It's not the best having all of these sources reliant on this specific channel. Uh, there's a couple more here that I wanted to discuss that we could really bring up here. They're not massive income sources, but I think this is something that anybody can do with, uh, you know, if you have $5 or if, if you have uh, no desire to create a personal brand or make videos or, or anything, uh, it, it's something that people can do. So one of those uh, is from dividends. So I've talked about dividend stocks on this channel before in the past. Uh, so from dividend payments, I think it was about $71 in 
in the past month uh, from dividends. So companies will pay dividends or essentially this little like bonus, think of it as, uh, for, for investing into those companies. So if you buy Coca-Cola stock or you buy Apple stock, they'll have these little dividends that might be a dollar, two dollars, three dollars that they might give you every three months, every quarter uh, for just kind of owning the stock as like a little thank you uh, or a piece of their revenue that they're kind of giving you uh, for you for owning that stock. Okay, so that's the way to think about it. And I actually have videos on dividend stocks. So if you're interested, I'll try to remember, I usually forget this, but I'll try to remember to link a video maybe like up here or down below, probably down below in, in the description if you want to learn about how to start making money from dividend stocks. Um, and then the final one here uh, that is bringing in some money is just from bank account interest. I think this is kind of a no brainer. Uh, it's one of the safest routes to go. Uh, it's insured by the government. So for example, uh, I get about 1.7% interest on my bank account uh, through online savings accounts, right? And so from this, uh, it's about $150 a month at the moment. It obviously fluctuates depending on how much cash I have in certain accounts. Uh, but what's nice from this is that it kind of is sort of like inflation protection. So 1.7% it protects me against inflation. Uh, it's going to be a couple thousand dollars a year. I would argue that I'm kind of cash heavy at the moment uh, just because I'm looking for new investments, new places to put my money uh, at the moment, which I see no problem with holding a little bit of cash at certain times when you want to uh, kind of really think about where to put your money next. So that's something else that kind of just keeps up with inflation. But because I do pay taxes on it, uh, I do count it as income. So those are my income sources. I think between all of them, they add up to a little bit over $42,000 from this past month. Uh, I'm going to be honest going forward. I don't know if we're going to do these, these, these uh, income update videos in the future, just because it, it's, been, it's been getting kind of weird uh, talking about income, personal income uh, on this channel. You know, I, I think it was a little bit different when it was like a lot lower and the channel was smaller. Uh, now it's just kind of personal. And I think it, it, it does feel a little bit weird talking about like revenue and income and everything related to that. So this might be the last time that we're doing this specific video, but being that this channel is primarily based on personal finance and helping people kind of save more money, invest more money, just put themselves in a better financial position, we'll always be discussing those topics in the future. So if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do that. If you found any value in this, make sure you drop a like. Uh, and thanks for supporting the channel, guys. I really appreciate it. Make sure you follow me on Instagram too. I'm posting a number of things on there. Um, maybe might do a couple of meetups in the future. I think we're gonna go to London sometime next month, maybe this month, I don't know. Uh, and maybe a couple other different big cities. And I'm gonna try to do some meetups. I don't know how that's going to work. I don't know like the logistics of that. Could be a little bit overwhelming, maybe underwhelming if like two people show up. But either way, uh, yeah, okay, let's just end this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the support, everybody. And I'll see everybody next time.